right, three, two, one. Lipless crankbaits. That's what we're gonna hit on today. Probably one of my favorite baits to throw, especially in the fall time of the year, but the lipless, it'll catch them just about any time of the year. I'm gonna start with the basics. I'm gonna do just like I do in all the Tackle Talk videos. If you guys haven't uh, checked out my Tackle Talk playlist on my YouTube channel, go to the playlist stuff and figure out how to get to the Tackle Talk playlist. Cause I go through every setup that I use from crankbaits to plastic worms, rods, reels, line, etc etc i go through all those things in detail and answer all the questions that you guys send me in dms but in particular we're going to talk about the lipless crankbait today the basics let's always start with just simple basics because some of you guys are just getting into fishing and just kind of learning your way around some of the ter terminology a lipless crankbait what is that it's a crankbait without a lip it ain't got a lip on it but it's still a crankbait just a good old square body. It's like a, it's like the old Chevys. It's an old square body uh, crankbait is all it is. No lip at all. It's good old lipless. I love it in the fall for a couple reasons. Most of the time your bite in the fall time on most of your fisheries, no matter where you live or what you fish, a pond, creeks, rivers, or the Great Lakes, most of the time it's going to be shad oriented in the fall because as the days begin to get shorter, the water temperature cools down, the shad start to migrate. Whether that means migrate shallow or migrate deeper, it doesn't really matter because they become more active and fish start to feed on shad more. So it's the perfect profile. They're you know, two, two and a quarter inches long. You can get them in the different sizes. You can cast them a long way. They're very heavy. Um, you can kind of vary what depth of the water column you use them in from as deep as one to three foot, as deep as probably 10 or 12 foot, just depending on what type of lipless crankbait you use and how big it is and what pound test line, how far you cast it, etc., etc. So we'll talk about, you know, where I like to fish it. We'll look at some of the equipment. Equipment is pretty, pretty important on this one, as it is on everything. We'll talk about the equipment I use and uh, just dig into the lipless because it's fun. It's fast, it's furious. And you got one on a lipless crankbait, you know it. Starting with the rod and reel combo that I like to use. Look, I'm even I'm lipless crankbait is such a big part of of who I am as a fisherman that I got a rod and reel that I designed for favorite specifically for it. I know y'all probably like, well I didn't want to hear about your rods pitch. Well, you got to sit and listen to it today. I designed a rod. It's a graphite composite rod just for throwing reaction baits crankbaits, rattle traps, lipless crankbaits, square bill crankbaits, those baits that you throw and you reel back to the boat. I designed a rod especially for that. All those rods, in my opinion, perform best on a graphite composite rod and that's pretty much what I designed here. This is in the six stick series of favorite. Uh, this, one, this particular one that I designed here is a 7.3 medium heavy power you want a softer rod, even if you don't get a graphite composite. You can use a, a medium power graphite rod if you don't have a graphite composite, but I feel like it, it performs best on a, on a graphite composite or a glass rod. Uh, you want something that's soft. Reason being, a lot of times with this bait right here, fish are notorious for trying to slap at it without actually eating it, without actually ingesting the bait. They'll come up to it and just slap it, try to kill it. Um, so you need a rod that when you have a fish hooked in the side of the head with these little tiny treble hooks on here, you need a, a rod that will give when that fish goes to surge and he's only got one treble hook and you're hollering and screaming and saying all kind of prayers like I do when I'm fighting the fish. You need a rod that'll give so when he surges or he jumps, it doesn't rip that hook out of his mouth. That's why it's important to have a pretty forgiving rod. This is, like I said, this is my six stick series uh, graphite composite. Leave me a comment. I haven't named this rod. It's, it's not available yet, okay? Leave me in the comment section what you think I should call my my crankbait rods. It's for crankbaits, chatterbaits, lipless crankbaits, stuff that you throw out and reel back. I'm using on this one, this is a lose. This, I like high speed reels on, on lipless crankbaits because I'm moving them fast. I'm not trying to finesse them. This time of the year you need to cover water, alright? And you need to make fish react to bite. Slow is usually, for the most part, generally speaking, I might eat my words on this, slow is generally bad in the fall time of the year. 
it's fall time of year is usually one of those times of year where you can smoke baits back faster the better especially if you own a clear water fishery like where i have here at the house so this is a fairly fast rod set or fairly fast reel seven five to one gear ratio reel what i love about it this is a new reel that that Luz just gave me this is just a new a new custom um dude this thing is small it's very small compact throwing these baits will wear you out because you're using them fast you're throwing them a long way you're jerking them you're popping the rod tip you're kind of doing a lot with and trying to make those fish react and bite so you need something that's comfortable, small, compact in your hands so you don't get so much fatigue in your forearms and your hands and fingers. If you have a big reel or a reel that you have to reel really fast or slower reel to keep up with the bait and the pace that the boat you're, you're fishing at, it can wear you out. It just works for you. If I make a long cast, one hits it way out there at 700 yards, I got enough speed to catch up with him and bring him in the boat. Line for the line on this one, 12 to 15 pound test. If I'm using like a quarter ounce or maybe even a half ounce, I'll use 12 pound test. If I'm using a quarter ounce, always 12 pound test. The bait just seemed to not work really that well with anything bigger. But I will use as high as 15, 15, maybe even 17 sometimes, just depending on what I'm doing with the trap. A lot of times when people think about lipless crankbaits, they think about throwing it in grass, aquatic vegetation. Dude, I'm, you're gonna see today, I'm actually gonna be throwing this in open water no structure, no grass, no wood, no nothing. I'm throwing it over 20, 30 foot, making noise, calling fish up to my bait to get them to bite it. So I might use a little bit smaller line in this context for a couple reasons. To be able to reach out and touch fish. They come up schooling, smaller line, smaller diameter, I can cast farther, all right? Bigger diameter, you got a little bit more restriction, a little bit more friction, throwing rhymes at y'all right friction and restriction you can't throw it as far but if i'm throwing like a half ounce and i'm whipping and putting a lot of stank on my cast i probably will throw a 15 or 17 pound test just so when i go back to you hear that when i go back to do that i don't there's a lot of torque on your knot so that's what i'm going to use for line almost always fluorocarbon and especially in the context that you're going to see me using it today so uh, yeah, that's the equipment. Very simple, it's not, not really super technical, but it's super important to have the right gear because it's gonna make you more efficient. It's gonna, um, gonna make you more efficient so you're not burning up a lot of energy, getting arm pump when you're making your cast. So yeah, that's the equipment there. Let's talk about the baits here. Pretty simple for me on baits and colors when it comes to uh, liftless crankbaits in clear water like where you're going to see me fishing here today translucent and chrome's pretty much it that's what i've been using i'm using this is a, a yozuri uh 3db that i'm going to be throwing here today brand new one that is taking him right out of the pack fresh to get stank on him today uh i'll throw that guy in clear water and i'll also throw like chromes when i'm in clear water anything in that shad pattern is going to be uh good you can see i've got I probably got hundreds of dollars of, of liftless crankbaits and just in this one box here. And I've got it all different types and hues of shads and crawdads and goals and so forth. But generally speaking, especially if the thread, the forage fish is going to be like thread fin or some type of shad, blueback herring, it's going to stay in those shad colors. But they're all in that white, white belly with some type of dark back. This is one of my custom colors right here. You can go to shopcarls.com. They have a very good selection of lipless crankbaits. This is where I get this Yoziri from right here. This is a good color. I've caught quite a few fish on. But as you can see, it's just straight up a shad pattern. Very translucent, clear colors. Um, as long as you stay in that category, you're going to be fine. I've got 100 different colors, but at the end of the day, I really end up throwing shad patterns, especially in the fall. Once the water temperature cools down, or if you have more stained color, you can go into more of the solid colors and brighter colors. And sometimes brighter colors are even good early in the season in extremely clear water. But something in this uh, this category is going to get you through just about anything that you come through. The drawing factor is obviously what the bait looks like, uh, but also that the sound. With lipless crankbaits, you've got a bunch of different sounds. That's why I like to have a lot of different manufacturers in my lipless crankbait box. You can hear the sound of the Yozuri. All right, listen at that. It's kind of not that loud, right? This is a Bill Lewis. Listen to this. It's going to be a lot more high frequency. 
big difference. When they're real active, Bill Lewis, you got to go with him. You hear that? That's real loud. You can call them up. Or if you're fishing over deeper water, heavier or thicker grass, call them up. Get their attention with that loud one. Clear water, like when I'm fishing today, open water, I'm going to be fishing it over, you know, where they can visually see the bait. Maybe something a little more, a little bit more subtle is better. Yozuri is a lot more, a lot lower frequency. Then all, obviously you've got um, like one knocking baits. Um, this is one that just has one big BB shot in it. Totally different sound, right? So it's important to have a bunch of different varieties in sounds because one of the drawing factors of a lipless crankbait is the different sounds that you have and it can definitely make a difference on certain days. Cloudy days, just days when they're inactive, uh, the depth, what type of vegetation, the structure you're fishing around, that makes a difference. So with that being said, let's get out on the water and um, just look at some of the different areas I like to fish these baits and uh, show you exactly how fast and how much fun it can be to catch them on a lipless crankbait during the fall time of the year. Start off with this right here. This is the uh, Yozuri 3DB shad here. It's just a clear, translucent, lipless fish in pretty clear water today. So I think this would be a good choice to kind of mimic the, the shad that we'll be fishing around. Um, but what I'm going to be fishing, you see, I'm fishing a, a long extended point out here that extends right out into the river channel. During the fall time of year, the, the shad usually they're coming from deep water and they start to transition shallow as they transition shallow they typically use you know points that are closer to deep water and, and even more so points that are closer to the river channel so i'm sitting in like 25 foot of water right now and this bait's only going to get you know four five foot at best and you say well why would you throw something that, throw, that goes that shallow in 20 foot of water because these fish are going to be suspended this time of the year um the fall time of the year the the bait the shad the fish everything is pretty much in the top part of the water column so you don't need a bait that'll get 20 foot deep or 15 foot for that for that matter they're going to be feeding up almost always so throwing a lipless is a good bait to cover water with the number one thing that i like it for uh especially is i can throw it in the wind wind is always great this time of the year but since the fish are in the top part of the water column when I'm throwing a lipless, I can throw it, I can reach out and touch those fish from a long way. And I can fish for those fish before they actually realize that I'm there. Since the, the bait and the fish, especially spotted bass, super aware of every move that you make when you're around them. Not necessarily scared, but they're aware. They know that you're there. So they may come to you, they kind of get out of position, which is not always a bad thing, but it can be. Um, I can cast it a long way and get and, and try to fish a piece of structure before the boat actually gets there and they start hearing the sonar ping and hearing the trolling motor, et cetera, et cetera. I can cast it a long way. And it just makes it, uh, it's a bait that you can catch fish on a lot of times when you can't catch them on anything else just for that very reason. Got him in the moonlight. Moonlight. Ain't Michael Jackson got him in the moonlight. He got a little da da. He got a little da da. What with the boogie? Oh, it's a good one. Oh, he jumped off. Why did you jump off, buddy? That was a good one too. He was a two, two and a half pounder. I jumped off. Oh, that was a pretty one. Dude, they're locking it on that little point. I think the shad moves up real shallow at night. The other night I caught a couple right before dark, just like this. You need these little long points that bait probably gets shallow at night. It's two in a row. They can be locked. There's nothing wrong with being locked down. Rain the grease, rain the grease. There he is. Good and two, boy. Good. I mean, a bag go. Lock her down.
Man. I mean, he is, he's not like kids meal size. He's value size. This is a value size bag. Redfin Shad, Blueback here, Crawdads, Pepsi, Cheetos, Wings. His lip was hanging out his mouth. Show out. I hope he stays pegged. This is where I was talking about the soft rod. Soft rod helps because you see how fish is making all those surges like that right there. You know, I could have him skin hook because I guarantee he wasn't trying to really get it in his mouth. And I got another rod out too, so I'm sure he'll grab that other rod. But they they'll have a skin hook if you got too much pressure on them, pull the hooks out. This is where that forgiving rod helps. I'm not gonna land every last one of them, but it definitely helps. It comes up here. Also, pretty good. Oh, it's a little, it's a little hybrid. A little hybrid. Everything on the lippers. It's not exactly what we were shooting for, but nonetheless, they are fun to catch. And they will. It's fun to catch them and they think it's fun to get hooks in you. So the best thing you can do if you can is keep your hands free and flip them in the boat just like that. A hybrid, you can tell it's a hybrid by the broken lines and just the overall shape of his body's a little different than a striper. A striper will have straight lines all the way down his back. Let me get a pair of pliers because we don't want no trouble, good buddy. Okay, okay. I said we do not want any trouble. We don't want trouble. Now, ideally, we would have liked to have caught some largemouth or spotted bass, but look, we'll take a good old hybrid bass anyway. Multi-species, you're gonna catch everything on the lipless. Try those tips out that we talked about today. You're gonna have a lot of fun this fall. Fishing in lipless crankbaits, especially when you find the shad.